when sorrow nears, Jehovah sees, Jehovah hears. Good morning, dear friends. We are together again, and only God has made it possible. This is a brand new day and a brand new month in the year 2020, September 2020. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Let's pray together. Father, we just want to appreciate you and reverence you for the miracle of carrying us from January up until September 1 today. Tuesday, September 1, 2020. May your name be exalted. We beseech you, Lord, to bring the word for this season that you may usher us, O God, even as you have helped us in the month of uh, August to walk in victory with several testimonies. We want to beseech you, the God of peace, to reveal yourself to us in this month of September that we shall be great recipients of the peace of God and we shall also be displayers of God's peace as you cause the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts to be inspired by the Holy Spirit, bringing glory and honor to you and leaving us with blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, dear friends. God, by his grace, has given us a new theme for the month of September 2020, and that theme is titled, The God of Peace. The God of Peace. The God of Peace. By the grace of God, God wants to make a special introduction of himself to us individually, corporately, in several aspects of our lives. God wants to reveal himself to us as the God that brings peace that is real peace. Peace of heart, peace of mind, peace in our homes, peace in our marriages, peace in our offices. You remember how much many nations of the earth have invested seeking for peace. Peace among several tribes, among several peoples. You can imagine United Nations spending so much money to ensure that peace happens amongst us. But you will agree with me that all that has failed several times because there's something about the human person. There is something that God needs to deal with in our lives for us to know and to enjoy peace that is peace. That's why God has given us this theme this month, the God of Peace. Dear friends, join me to the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. The letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 20 and verse 21. This happens to be one of the closing benedictions, the closing prayers that the writer of the, of the letter to the Hebrews used to end his letter, a prayer he made for his Hebrew audience. He said, now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work, to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen the God of peace. Now, I want us to notice a few things from this passage about the God of peace. The first thing I'd like us to notice in this passage is that God Almighty, the Alpha, the Omega, He is the God of peace. There is nobody on earth that can offer you peace. There's nobody that carries peace except the God that made the heavens and the earth. He is the one that generates peace. He's the one that is the engineer of peace. He's the one that, that releases peace that lasts forevermore. And our writer, the servant of God in this passage, Hebrews 13, declares him as the one that brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. And I want to start from there today, my dear friends. God decided to make peace a reality on earth by sacrificing his one and only son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because Satan, the enemy of righteousness, generated war, generated confusion in heaven. But the God of peace silenced him forever and he sacked him with one third of the angels that were subordinate to him and they were cast down on earth 
and since they came down here on earth, they have been causing confusion. But I bless the name of the Lord because the Bible makes us to realize that God immediately sent his son Jesus Christ. Because when Satan landed on earth, the first people he visited happens to be Adam and Eve, those whom God made in his image and likeness. There was so much peace around them in the Garden of Eden because God was inside the garden with them. God was their peace. The God of peace resided with them. And the Bible says that they interacted with him. But Satan came down and went and deceived Adam and Eve. He seduced them away from the God of peace. And that was how violence and confusion came into the earth. And since that time, trouble, you can see that in the house of Adam and Eve, it was right in their house that the first murder took place. You remember their sons, Cain and Abel, they went and made a sacrifice unto God. And when God accepted the sacrifice of Abel and rejected that of Cain, because their, their parents had already broken faith with the God of peace, there was jealousy, there was envy, there was anger, and eventually somebody killed his brother. But I bless the name of the Lord. God began to look at that and God said, no way. I am the God of peace. And nobody can truncate my gift of peace to my people. I must make a way for my people. I will send my son. And his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. As we see in Isaiah chapter 9. And he shall come and lay down his life. So that the peace of God, the God of peace, might come back and begin to reign in our midst. And I bless the name of the Lord that Jesus Christ came on earth and he paid the total sacrifice and according to the, the word of God he made peace between those of us who were far that is the Gentiles and he made peace between us and those who were close that is the Jews with his blood and that is why today as many as received Jesus Christ as many as believed on his name to them he gave the power praise the Lord to be called sons and daughters of God but I want us to look at this text again. It says, May the God of peace who brought up the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. I want to state to you, my brother and my sister, why God made the resurrection possible was that he's, he, he will be manifested as the God of peace through all generations. And in this month of September, I want to say to you, for you to enjoy the God of peace, you must receive the gift that God has offered us. You must receive his son, our savior, Jesus Christ, whom he has raised from the dead, so that the peace mission, the peace ministry, the peace package might be released to humanity in the name of Jesus Christ. In this month of September, I want to begin to declare to you, my brother and my sister, that God has made the offer, that God has given us his son, Jesus Christ, and as we embrace him, and as we receive him by the grace of God, he that is the prince of peace, will come into our lives and he will bring the God of peace into us. Praise the Lord. Hey, this is a wonderful message. When Jesus Christ comes into our lives, he says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If anybody hears my voice, I will come and open the door. I will come in and eat with him and he will also eat with him. Eat with me. That is the word of God. Revelation 3 verse 20. When we receive Jesus Christ, whom the Lord raised, when whom the God of peace raised from the dead, so that peace will come to humanity, if we receive him in our lives, then he will bring in the God of peace into our lives. And we shall be carrying around the God of peace wherever we go to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that by the grace of God, you will not only know the God of peace, the God of peace will come into your life and you will be a carrier of the God of peace in the name of Jesus. In the midst of the turbulence we face in this country, in the midst of the turbulence we face in the economy, in the midst of the turbulence we face in the political arena, even in our educational uh, 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 sphere of life, there's so much confusion. But I am so glad that God, the God of peace, raised our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from, from, from the dead so that he can be our great shepherd, releasing the peace of God in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, God has offered us Jesus Christ, his only son, and he has given him to us as the one that ushers him into our lives. And when the God of peace comes into our lives, he will bring peace unto us. He will cause us to begin to dwell in the peace, even though that the, the things, many things will be shaken. Many things will be shaken in our lives. 
and I have discovered something. Now, one of the reasons why there is so much trouble in our lives and in our homes is that the God of peace is not reigning yet. And I want to challenge us in the month of September. Give the Lord more room in your lives. Expand His throne upon your life. Give Him more access to the way you think, to your mindset. Let the God of peace reign in your mind. When the God of peace reigns in your mind, He will bring peace into your lives. Many of, our, many of us husbands who are fighting with our wives, the reason is because the God of peace has not yet come in to reign over our lives. And therefore, we are looking for somebody to transfer our aggression onto. But if the God of peace were reigning in our hearts, he will absorb all our anger. He will absorb all our frustrations. He will absorb all our confusions. And he will take them away in the name of Jesus Christ. No wonder in Matthew 11 verse 28, our Lord Jesus Christ declared and said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he declared, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, and you will find rest for your souls. I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ in this new month that you should embrace the God of peace who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, who is the Prince of Peace to usher peace into your lives. My dear friends, I'd like us to know that our enemy is not resting, but we owe him no apologies. We have no time for him. The time we have is the time we should concentrate on the God of peace and allow him to take every space in our lives. And as he takes every space in our lives, he will be ministering peace unto us in the name of Jesus. I am reminded of the time that the apostles were sitting with Jesus Christ in the boat and at a particular time a big storm came and they thought they were going to capsize, they were going to lose their lives and they were screaming on top of their voices and our Lord, who is the Prince of Peace, rose up from the boat and he said, Peace be still. Hallelujah. In the month of September, in the name of the Lord, I begin to declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Peace be still in the name of Jesus. I say peace be still over those challenges that you're facing, over those turbulent waters in your life, in your marriage. I say peace be still in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, my dear friend, there is nobody that can handle the frustration you're facing except the God of peace. There is nobody that can deal with the economic challenges you're facing except the God of peace. And when you welcome him into your life, he will give you peace in your economic life. Even our students who are facing several challenges in their respective schools, I want to encourage you that we should allow the God of peace to come into our lives, to reign in our lives. And when he comes in, he will bring his peace that passes all understanding. In this same passage, as we conclude, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21, it says, May the God of peace make you complete in every good work. Hallelujah! That is one of the greatest benefits you're going to receive when you welcome the God of peace into your life. Is it not exciting? Lord, I receive completion in every good work in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I receive the spirit of completion in every good work to do your will in the name of Jesus. The God of peace will make you complete when you welcome him into your life in the name of Jesus. He will make you complete in spirit. He will make you complete in your emotions. He will make you complete in your attitude. And you will find yourself doing his will. And as you are doing his will, his government will increase upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. While others are screaming, others are frustrated, others are shouting, I declare the peace of God upon your life in the name of Jesus. As you receive him into your life, you will see the grace of God increasing upon your life in the name of Jesus. In the month of September, in the grace of God, you shall find yourself doing well and what is pleasing in the sight of God. Let me finally close by reading a testimony from Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. The story of Habakkuk is very, very, very well known to many of us. Habakkuk was somebody that was ministering at the time there was turbulence in the land. And he had a lot of complaint, a lot of murmuring, and he was railing them at God, wondering why God was not causing things to fall into place until the God of peace visited him. And when the God of peace visited prophet Habakkuk, the Lord quieted his heart. 
The Lord offered peace to him in the midst of the turbulence. Now can we hear his testimony? And I pray that by the grace of God, in this month of September, may that be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. He declared, although the fig tree may not blossom, hallelujah, although there be no fruit on the vines, although the labor of the olive may fail, although the fields may not yield any fruit, although the flock may be cut off from the fold, and although there will be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Why? Because he had embraced the God of peace. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that the God of peace will follow you throughout this month of September in the name of Jesus. I pray that our ears shall be open to hear him 24 hours of the day in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we bind all the harbingers of noise and confusion in our lives, we receive the God of peace afresh in the name of Jesus. May that turbulent marriage receive the peace of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the demons that bring confusion in our lives, we bind them and we cast them away in the name of Jesus. In closing, may the God of peace, may the God of peace, who raised our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, may the Lord through the blood of the new covenant make you complete in every good work that you may do his perfect will in the month of September, not running away, not slipping away into iniquity, but walking in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the month of September, our month of peace from the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I will worship the Lord for he is worthy. can quench the evil flame. flame. Peace, when trouble goes, Jehovah sees, Jehovah knows. He is my peace, peace. when sorrow nears, Jehovah sees, Jehovah knows. Oh, so